Okay, right. Apology for something a bit late this morning. I was very caught surprised because we expect that today to be lesser people on the road because students are supposed to be in school at home and people are supposed to be like working from home, right? <laughs> Default, right? So apparently, I didn't expect the traffic to be that bad. I came out as usual time, but today was terrible. So I apologize and thank you for waiting for me. So, all right. Okay, once again, can you hear me loud and clear, guys? If all, can you hear me? Please let me know. I thank you to just good morning to me so I can see that. Okay. Okay, right. Today is the 27th of September, 2021, Monday. All right, Monday. Okay, so today's caption will be China Evergrande <clears throat> defaulted their offshore commitment. Now, I've been trying to look at this news for quite a while, and apparently I realized I couldn't find any news on this. We know that they are supposed to commit payment on Thursday. So every Thursday is available. It could be like a Thursday afternoon. It could be Thursday in the evening. It could be the Thursday US timing. But Friday came. Friday went. And Friday itself, the Saturday morning, which is Friday for US, also came and gone. And apparently still to date, there's no news regarding this. So very good chance that now they are likely going to go into a 30 days, uh, this uh, period whereby if they really don't make payment, they will really default. And this is going to be a big, big problem. So I kind of suspect that they will likely be doing this because the, it doesn't make any sense to pay the offshore, in my opinion. It doesn't make any sense because they know that no one will lend any money again. So this is going to be a big problem for China, all right? So the thing is this, there's a joke of the day right now. People are saying the sky is falling, but apparently the stock market is going up. Apparently, so what happened on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the US stock market kept on climbing up. And I've been telling you guys this is that it will climb up. And I told you that it will happen. In fact, it will happen another one or two more days, in fact. Okay, one or two more days later, we could actually then see a potential turning point. I'll explain more in details later through the uh, technical analysis part itself. But definitely the chicken call for falling, the, the, the chicken is calling for the sky is falling, but the stock market is still surging. Okay. Now disclaimer as usual, once again, do understand this. My job is to share with you how I interpret what I see in the market. And all day, you have to make your final decision on whether or not to follow or make money out of it. All right, this is very, very important. All right, so we have our Hang Seng group and it's getting bigger and bigger every single day. Now we have 68 people right now. Uh, apparently, right, this is what we do in the office, whereby we will look at the market, we'll trade live together. And more importantly, students are making money on a very regular basis. I can say that right now, almost every day, almost every day, students are making money from the Hang Seng market and they just do it on their own. They don't need me to tell them exactly what to do. They do their own trading and they, they understand how it works. This is the lovely part of this Hang Seng trading. So I'll tell you, I'll talk about this more probably later this week and I'm opening the door to more people to join us, okay? Now this week itself, while well, we have very, very important data. We're talking about call durable goods today. Now the call durable goods today is expecting to be 0.5%. Now, previously it was 0.8%, so we do expect the numbers to drop a little bit. This is one sign of having a bit of problem now in the market. And of course, later part in the midweek, we have Jerome Powell speaking, which is like, he'll speak on Tuesday, he'll speak on Wednesday. So that means that there will be a lot of market movement. And again, that is the one reason why I suspect that the US stock market will try to trade a bit higher, as always, you know, things like that. Then of course, we have the GDP numbers and the initial jobless claim. And last of all, the very important is the ISM manufacturing PMI data. All right, that is going to be very important. Now I realized that I get to see the comments a bit slow this morning. So I'm not too sure is it because that there's some delay or it, it's really like that. So all I can say is that's why if you guys any question and if I reply you a bit slower, please accept my apology, but this is what I'm seeing right now. Now you can see for today's call durable goods, the numbers have been recovering a bit by bit, but it's very far away from the May's high or September high. So all I can say is that any dip this in this number would not be a very good sign. Okay, so good morning to you, Brian, Janet, Alex, and Anthony. Okay, so let's just revisit what happened on Friday. Wow, look at the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones Industrial Index continued to search 500 points on Friday. 
I think, you no, know, this is not Friday, this is Thursday number. So I think there's some error here, apology. Let's look at this one here. The data was Thursday data, apology on that. That is Friday's movement. Now Friday, the Dow Jones are by 500, uh, up by the third straight day by S&P 500. Now the thing is this, there's some sort of volatility on last Friday. A move by China to ban cryptocurrency weighed on on the technology sector. And of course, Nike shares fell because of the supply chain. So the Dow Jones managed to eat up a 33 three points gain, while S&P 500 still managed to uh, trade higher. Now, all along itself, right, we have a very bad start last week. Right after that, in the midweek, the market recovered very strongly. And now, even though the Evergrande problem is still ongoing now, but the market has recovered quite a fair bit. And of course, because of that itself, right, if Evergrande needs to pay it's an $83 million US dollars in interest, but since now, they've been being very quiet and likely they're going to go into the 30 days default uh, period. So all this is all basically way on to the market. But can I say the US market is not really bothered by that. They recover and later on a technical ground, it does show a very strong technical recovery potential. So let's look at what happened on Friday's US market. Let's take a look now for those are TWB students, they will understand what am I drawing here. For those are new students or going to be our followers, just enjoy this, okay? So what we saw was that on last Thursday, the KSI closing was rate for the KSI. So therefore, when the market opens around here itself, you can see that the market did go below. Now, once the market go below P2, we know that it will go down lower, which really it went down. But if the market after that recovers above the P2, based on our strategy, if you see a color change over CCRY, rate to yellow, it will be a buy. But the upside, we kept limited to KPR plus one because the KSI is red in color. Okay, that's how we interpret this. And let's look at look what happened on the market on Mon on Friday. So initially, the market went up first, ding dong around the opening price. Okay, and then once it goes below P2, you can see that instantly it went out to KTR minus one. But very incredibly, at KTR minus one, it stopped there beautifully. Now all these lines are auto drawn by the system. Okay. You can see that the market couldn't find any strength to stay above P2. Now, below P2 is always a sell, and you can see that the market did go down. It was only in the later part before the, when the cash market opened, things flip around. Why? What happened? Take a look. Now, throughout this period of time, the KSI was all the way red. Now, this is very different from the oversold. Now, when indicators hit a low level, usually it's called oversold and stuff. But our staff don't do this. We all wait. Once we see this happening, when our color change over, when our red turns to green change over, that means that the boys have came in to buy. Now earlier the boys were dumping, now the boys are buying. So that's why immediately you can see that the market did a color change red to yellow. And of course the Dow shot up, okay, the Dow shot up. So that is very important to make sure that the KSI, you're watching the KSI very, very closely and you know what you're doing, okay? It's very, very important. Okay, so that is what happened to the Dow Jones on Friday. Let's look at the gold market. Now, this is interesting. Now, gold, the KSI has been red color. So that's why you can see the market is still coming down. The blue bars are showing that there is still downside pressure, but the KCX, the green, is already flashing. So what happened is pretty clear that the market opens below between the two pivot points. By right, with the KSI rate, we're supposed to see further downside. But you can see the downside was kind of limited and almost instantly it recovers. And once it recovers, go above the pivot one, that was where the go uptick higher. So the thing is this, that means that although we are seeing some the downside in the gold market, but kind of that the price action doesn't really dictate that. So that's the reason why I believe that gold price might be recovering in the near term. So let's take a look at what happened on Friday. So you can see that <clears throat> very clearly the boys came in to buy. You can see that the boys turned the indicator from red to green as a buy buy indication. And of course, when the color turned from red to yellow, it was a buy. So the market went all the way up to KTR plus two. That was a very good run. But once it hit KTR plus two, we realize that the BMB surface. Now, when you see BMB surfacing, it's never a good sign. And of course, this BNB come with two other elements. It came with a CCYR, yellow turns to red. It's a sell signal. And of course, it triggered KTR plus two, which all basically gives the go ahead for gold to come down. And gold really, really came down all the way from KTR plus two, all the way back to the opening price, okay? 
Then, of course, it did find some strength. The KCX came in, color change over, CCRY, you look for buy, it recovers, but the upside was never that strong enough. And then it hovers around this area. But interesting thing is that end of the day, there was some buying towards the end and it was above OP. Now, this does, does tell me that right, the buying momentum actually might be creeping in. So for gold itself, I believe that there could be further upside in the time to come. So let's see later on during our technical for today. Okay, so this is a recap of what happened on gold. Hopefully my student understand this. For the non-student, if you think that this is interesting, do join us, okay? All right, so let's look at some of the local and global news right now. Now, local news, oh my goodness, 1,939 new COVID-19 cases. Really, this is getting very, very scary. Because look at the numbers, it's just like, you know, mounting up like a, the Dow and NASDAQ chart, it's really pretty scary. Although the imported cases are dropped, I mean, have not, it's not based on imported cases, you can see. We have some uptick recently, but it was just an uptick. But after that, let's look at the numbers. So seriously, at the moment now, it's a local infection is the one that's giving us a problem. Now the dormitory again got hit recently, right? You can see the dormitory numbers also start to search up already. So this is very scary. What's these people, they actually work and they come back home. Work, come back home, right? They are, even their local, little, little circle of friends is like, you know, their, their, their area of moving around is very little, but yet they got infected. So you can imagine that those people who are running around in Singapore itself, right? It's going to be very, very, it, it become a very, it's become a very serious position, all right? So all I can say is this, please mask up, take care of yourself, all right? Please make sure that, you know, you do your things, you know, at the right place. Now, Bitcoin and Ethereum actually slide because China now intensified the crackdown on cryptocurrency. So what we saw was that there was a sell down on Bitcoin, but it's only 5%. Uh, what was the reason? Because China says that now all crypto related activities are illegal. Now, no matter what, it's illegal already. So why is that so? Because apparently they don't want the money to go out. That's very clear. So the regulators threatened to sue companies over a product called LEND because it basically lent money in a way to crypto to people. It's a little bit like our end financial thing itself. So all these tells you that China is not happy with this and they will want to bring the price lower. So there are some, some of the experts are saying that it may go down to 38,000. Now for me itself, I've been saying this, for Bitcoin anywhere between 38 to 36,000 will be a good level. So we're still waiting there, all right? And of course, uh, Kramer says that the crypto crackdown is because China just doesn't want people to hide their money. Okay, this is according to Jim Kramer. Okay, now the thing is this, that I mentioned earlier this uh, earlier, right? Ch China Evergrande confirmed misses the bond payment according to the mainstream media like NIK Asia, Reuters, and Wall Street Journal. So the offshore investors did not get their money and there's technically nothing much they can do. It's just to hope and pray. But you can see that when I mentioned that the Evergrande chairman really took a lot of money, some people don't believe me, but I managed to find this, this news from you. It shows that the Evergrande chairman actually pocketed as much as 8 billion US dollars in dividend while forcing employees to lend money cash, not lend company cash. That means that they want the employee to lend money to the company. So this is very terrible, but seriously, this is what happened in China. It seemed to be a common practice and this is ongoing right now. And of course, uh, China government have no choice. They're pumping the money because if they don't need it, it's going to create a lot of problem. And apparently they are pumping as much as $71 billion in cash in the past week to calm the market nerve. Okay, so that's what's happening right now in the Chinese market. So let's start look at some very important market information and for references. So first of all, apparently, uh, TikTok's players are actually watching the Congress right now. Now, apologies on the hater. All these haters, are, and this is not the right hater. I think I did uh, save the file earlier. Never mind, but let's focus on the main caption. So TikTok's traders are now basically copying what the Congress do, especially Nancy Pelosi, right? To them, it's all right. Nancy Pelosi is really the next biggest stock market wheel. Some say that Nancy Pelosi must be a psychic because why? Almost every time she buys, almost make money, right? So of course, there are some people saying that, hey, because she knows what's going on. And you look at the chart record of hers, the last three years, almost anything that she buys has went up by at least 100%. So some people say that, <clears throat> might as well just follow her. As long as she can, if she's buying, definitely can't be too far wrong. So this is what you can consider. Go to, <laughs> yeah, go into the TikTok and look out for Nancy Pelosi. All right, you will see some very interesting stuff. <clears throat> Now, of course, the biggest thing is that we will have some big volatility this coming week. 
Why is that so? First of all, again, I mentioned Jerome Powell will be testifying before the Congress. And of course, some of the Fed officials will be coming on board. <clears throat> and of course, October is going to be the more volatile month. Okay, It's really an, a month whereby the volatility is 36% higher than average. Okay, Now, if you remember this in 1987, 19 October, we saw the Dow Jones coming down by 21%. So this is the one reason why October is always a very volatile month. But on the flip side, you must understand it's volatile, but usually the bottoming up is also in October. Yes, so if there's going to be any sell down in September, then likely October will see a bit more volatility, but then the usual bottom will be around that. So traders want to go long in the market, can consider to watch October closely. Who knows, you may get to buy the low again. Now, of course, our wealth manager, Wellington Shield, says that many stocks have fallen below the 200-day moving average. And of course, this is not, not a very good sign. Now, the 200-day moving average is an average that the last is something that people use it in Wall Street and quite a few people actually uh, watch on it. So let me just show this to you later on, okay? So I think, and come on, this coming Monday, we have the durable goods and we have the ISM data on Friday and all these basically uh, is going to weigh in. And of course, Jerome Powell speaking and Janet Yellen is also be talking, talking. So all this tells me that there's a probability of going upside is kind of there unless there's a reason to take profit, okay? So what you can look out for is this. So another guy was saying, uh, Kathy and that lady, sorry, was saying that it's also the 10-year yield to watch. Now, I've been watching the 10-year yield very clearly and it's went up again to 1.43%. So what is saying that right now, that like, as a wheel keep on going up, right? This will actually cause the technology counters to go down a little bit. Now, there have been investors, they are actually now very fixated on the 50-day moving average, okay? Now, let me bring it to you, the 50-day moving average. Apparently, as long as it stays above the 50-day moving average, the market is buyer. Below the 50-day moving average, the 200-day moving average will be the support. So, let's take a look. Now, this is a cash market, and you can see very clearly every time when the, this cash market goes below the 50-day moving average, almost instantly, the market will rebound. Can you see that? So what we saw was that on Monday, it broke below the 50-day moving average. So the algorithm kicked in and said the thumbs heavy selling. But after the heavy selling, you can see that almost dramatically, the market recovers. And of course, the last few days, the market tries and now it stays above the 50-day moving average. So it seems that every time when the market goes below the 50-day moving average, you just have to look out for buy signal. And this has been working pretty effective. So traders, if you want to know when's a good time to buy, look out the 150-day moving average. But on the flip side, if the market breaks below the 50-day moving average, then the selling will come back down again. So all you need to do is put a trailing stop or a stop loss or a stop limit at this 50-day moving average. You should be fine. All right. So traders do watch out for that. All these are little telltale signs I can share with you and you can actually take this as a form of consideration for your trading. Okay. All right. So, um, all right, but most of them are still thinking that the market should recover because the selling has came in and the market has fed off the selling. So likely they're going to expect further to go up. But of course, if the market fails to stay above the 50-day moving average, then of course the market may come down. But uh, likely is that uh, the downside is kind of limited. Okay, so traders are still watching it. And this particular trader is expecting the 10-year yield to go up higher, same as mine, and looking at 1.53. Now, my target is 1.60. So let's see what happens. Now, Jim Cramer himself is saying that this headed to a come before storm moment. So to him, he felt that right Monday to Friday, he already he know that some of the key things to watch out for, and he believed that this is going to be a pretty volatile period. Now, let me take a look here as well. So you're talking about more on Evergrande on Monday, and Tuesday we have Micron, Tor, Sintas, Miller, Com, My, uh, Miller, Not, and these are all the companies that are going to have their earnings. And of course, he talked about the COVID. So he says that Monday, we will look at Evergrande, Tuesday, Micron and Tor Industry. Then we have all more earnings from Bed Bath, CarMax, and so forth. And Friday is whereby they want to look at whether the COVID cases right now, because in America, the cases are still going up, but it's highly, hardly now men mentioned in the mainstream media. Why is that so? Of course, we all know the answer, because media can be easily manipulated. All right. So we have covered the front part, the fundamental. It's kind of like this week uh, from last Saturday, last Saturday to today. But nonetheless, the chart will be interesting. Of course, the US debt, there will be debt ceiling that we'll watch out for, but still we have some time towards that. 
Okay, so let's look at the chart right now. The bull goes moo, the bear goes grrr, and the lemming go is different this time. Okay, let's look at the charts. Here we go. Now, China A50 has traded and is gap up. It has gap up. So that means the market is going to be kind of bullish today. Now, we, though, though, although it seems that it should be bearish with the China Evergrande not really doing it, but again, as mentioned, China's government are putting a lot of money in the market. So definitely, it's trying to hold up, okay? So today's MLP will be somewhere near here, the mid-level price. As long as the market stays above the mid-level price, you should be safe. The moving average is still the same, 15,115. So we can leave it there. The moving average for MA200 has moved down a little bit, okay? So overall itself, we can see a little bit of problem right now for the uh, for the market because you can see that um, the market is kind of restrict, uh, resisted at the MA30 um, level. So if the market can cross it, it will move up the entire market higher. But if the market fail and reject and come down instead, then the selling may bring it back down to the previous low. So my personal take is this, at the moment now, more likely it will go through the MA30 because with the Chinese government coming in itself, it's going to be tough to really expect one to go down, okay? All right, so Hong Kong is going to open in a very short moment time. Let's look at Hong Kong uh, conventional chart first. Hong Kong last Friday, we saw a very big sell down, okay? After it hit MLP, it failed, it came down. But today, I expect the gap up. So traders to watch out for that. Hong Kong's going to open. I'm going to move out the Hong Kong chart right now. Here we go. Okay, Hong Kong has gapped up this morning. Hong Kong has gapped up this morning. Opening price is at 24,062 level. Currently now is um, trading between the two pivot. Now do note once again, last Friday it closed at 23,000, 24,008, so about by 50 points. Okay, so let's have a look at the, um, how do we look at this? Now, first of all, the KSI is red in color. We always look at the day before. Um, sorry, the, the yesterday's, uh, KSI to do to this reading. Okay, so what happening right now, now the opening price is between the two pivot with the KSI great in color. So the upside will be limited to KTR plus one. Now, if the market do come down, it should easily hit KTR minus one easily, all right? But with the US market currently trading higher now, I kind of suspect that the, the downside for Hang Seng will be limited unless, again, there's some more news coming up from China or China Evergrande, and that will bring the, the Hang Seng lower. If not at the moment now, uh, it should be kind of flattish, okay? Dow Jones chart. Now, Dow Jones is trading higher. Now, last, last week during the MAO, I was telling you guys where I suspect the, Hang, the Dow Jones will be going. Now, I told you guys, first of all, the Dow Jones has this BNB on this day. This is the BNB, right? So we said that, right, 34,435 is a very important level. If the market basically crossed for 34,435, it will go up. And true be told, it's really going higher. And I said that it will go to the MA30, and it's really, it went there. Now, this morning, the Dow Jones continued to trade higher. And now it's at trading at 34,936. Now, based on my expectation is that Dow should be able to travel towards 35,108 level. Now, all these are automatically drawn for us. And we just have to follow through to buy and sell. Now, the thing is this 35,108 will be the resistance that I think the Dow will be going for, all right? If the market buying continue. Okay, so that's just one thing, <clears throat> that's one thing to watch out for. Okay, the Dow Jones going higher. Okay, now at the moment now for the Dow Jones, we put in all the other stuff. Okay, make it bigger now. Okay, so this is the uh, MLP for today, Dow Jones. You can see that it's already above MLP. It's also trading above the MA30. So everything is very positive for the Dow this morning. Okay, I repeat, it's very positive. The MA30 itself is at 34,828 level. So which means that as long as the Dow Jones stays above 34,828, it will be a buy. And if you look at the today's momentum movement, let's take a look at today's momentum. You can, you can see that, see, this morning, this morning, the Dow Jones opened once it crosses the 34,828, you can see the Dow Jones immediately 
reacted by buying up. So this is my point here. So <clears throat> as long as you know what to do for the MA30, MA200, you just follow through, you will be able to make money. And this is how, how I'm doing it live right now. So as long as the Dow Jones stays above 34,828, the upside potential is still going to stay for now. Okay, this is very, very important. You can see that this is able to do live because all these are repeated patterns that we've been doing it every single day. And we've done it for more than 100 of sessions. So we know exactly that what was going to happen soon. Okay, so traders just kindly take note of that. That is the number to watch out for for today, Dow Jones 34,828 level. All right, good morning to you. Um, this Eric, Kelza, and Jerry. Okay, very important to mind to you. Okay, all right. By the way, I'm seeing gold prices going up, and I did tell you guys today I do suspect to see gold price going higher, and it's happening right now. So for those who are involved in gold, congratulations to you. Yeah. Okay, let's just look at the weekly chart to understand more. Now, this is the Dow weekly chart. You can see beautiful, right? Last week, I'm telling you that the Dow will come down and I give you a very specific figure. I say that the Dow Jones will hit about 34,517. I, I, I said that and then indeed it really, really happened. It came down, but eventually stays above it. Okay, it stays above it. So now what do we suspect? Well, my line is gonna stay. My, my line is going to stay around here. Okay, I guess hear some interesting noise on my the other side of the room. Yeah, I think they have bought the Hang Seng and very profited. Congratulations to them. Okay, so um, the thing is this, uh, what do I see right now? This is a very beautiful recovery week on the uh, market, long tail recovery. So there is a very good possibility that we might see the Dow Jones going back up to all the way to this point here. So there is a possibility for the Dow Jones to go back up all the way to 35,355 zone, okay? All right, ignore that. Okay, now I want to show you something here is everybody, I'm going to just go to one side of it. Okay, hold on. Uh. Let's take away some of the technical charts. Uh, everybody take a look. This is the Dow Jones on a very, very normal way of drawing. Now the Dow Jones, as you can see, it went all the way up, pull it back down. So of course, this is one of the things I can look for Fibonacci retracement. So I think the highest point here, I can change the color a bit on. Okay, I think the highest point, we drag it down. Can you see that? Beautiful, right? So if you look at the highest point, this is historical high, so it's pretty clear. Oops. Can you see that? This is the historical high of the Dow Jones and it's the low recently. Let me just put it carefully in the right placing. Here we go. You will notice that it's a very clear shot here as well. From the highest point to the lowest point, the market came down. And then after that, it rebounded, right? So we have the 23.6, 38.2, and the 50. And you realize that it hit the 61.8 beautifully and pulled back. But once it hit the 50 percentile level, it immediately, right, today now, it's recovery. So this is actually a very strong uptrend movement, okay? That's the reason why the last few days, we've been calling you guys to uh, consider to buy back your short position and go long in the market, which is happening right now. So uh, all I can say is that this is very clear that the market seemingly is gonna test this point here. That is a very good chance the market may wanna test the 35,300 uh, plus level, okay? There's a very good chance that the Dow is gonna test here. Then now the Dow has to stay. Now we have a clear shot above the 61.8. So that is 34,000. 846 level. Unless the Dow Jones go back down below 34,846, uh, if not, the Dow should be going higher this week. Okay, I repeat myself one more time. Unless the Dow Jones come back down to 34,846, if not, the probability of the Dow Jones coming down is going to be much higher. 
I think this is going to be very, very important. You need to be very careful on that, uh, traders. Please uh, take note of that very important information. Okay, all clear? All right, if everybody clear, please key number one right now. That means that you know that the Dow likely is going to search higher this week as long as it stays above 34,846. And a key right now. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for those key number one. And let's look at the Hang Seng right now as we as we talked earlier. Let me bring it in. Wow, look at Hang Seng. You see that? I told you Hang Seng will be going up. And true be told this morning, Hang Seng opened higher and straight away it shot up already. So how many of you made money from Hang Seng this morning? Because this morning you're supposed to buy Hang Seng, right? You're supposed to see the color change over red to yellow. So this is where you will buy your Hang Seng. And now it went up for you by almost 100 points. So if you have profited from Hang Seng, please key the word HK. If you have made money from Hong Kong, please key HK right now. I want to see how many students of mine actually made money from Hang Seng this morning. All right, as long as you made money from Hang Seng, please type HK. I'd like to see how many of you have really made money from the market. Okay, as long as you've made money from Hong Kong, please type HK so that I can see that uh, you guys have made money. Wow, okay, well done. Okay, so we have people making money like uh, Eric made money, uh, King Hua has made money, Andrew, Angeline, Susan, Kim Lai, David, wow, Aza since last Friday, and Henry, congratulations to all of you. See, these are all students making money live right now as I'm speaking to you guys on Morning MAO. So every day is someone doing this. So today, because it's on Trade Live, it's on Face Trade at the Boys, so you all can see it live, all right? But of course, tomorrow, we we'll back to our own uh, individual group chat so you can see it. So if you guys think that this is something that you really want to participate and make money together, then do join us, okay? So congratulations to, again, the traders who made money. Well done, okay? Well done. Good job done, okay? Okay, so let's continue our, analy our analysis, Daniel. Okay, so let's let's look at the Dow today, how we are traded with the PWB system. Now, very interesting, and there's something I want to warn you though. Okay, the market has been going up. That is very clear. That one I already tell you that. But the KSI, our KSI has been red for the last few days too. Now, prior to that, when the market was sideways, our KSI turned red. And when the moment you turn red, you can see the Dow Jones collapse. But do you know that the last few days for the Dow Jones is still is recovering, right? My KSI is still staying red. So this tells you that my KSI is nothing to do with price action. My indicator is not price action based. It's not delayed. It's just that it has its reason to be there. So for TWB students, it's all right. You all know that when you all see the price going up, when the KSI is red, it's not a very good sign. So if let's say you're long in the market, may I suggest you take some... Uh, profit along the way up and also place stop trailing stop loss that is positive to you and let it run. Now the market can go higher and who knows the KSI may turn to green. But if the market is still going up and the KSI stay red, right? Traders, you need to be very careful. That's all. Okay. That means that this upside is all right. Might be more of a push up to maybe, maybe take profit. I don't know. But for today, as long as the market stays above OP, the upside should be between KPR plus one to the maximum KPR plus two. So you look at it right now. Look at it. In the 
Okay, this is the where we are right now. You can see all my indicators are automatically drawn. So you can see that this is the opening price for today. And uh, the color is yellow. The KSI intraday is still green. That's why it will go up. And that's how I told you, right? You go to KDR plus one, and you can see KDR plus one trigger, and the market is now hovering around here. So it's as if that the market knows that there's a KTR plus one somewhere. Now, all these are mathematically um, what they call um, calculated by the system. You don't need me, you don't see me drawing any trend lines, right? All these are mathematic formula. So as long as the market today is a buy, we know that the upside could be about KTR plus one. And indeed, it has already beautifully fulfilled itself. So if you can now stays above it, then of course you can go to KTR plus two. Okay. But at the moment now, it's now kind of kind of like restricted around this area here. Let's just see how it goes later on. Okay, so that is the Dow Jones for today. Let's look at NASDAQ. Now, NASDAQ continued to recover. We saw a very beautiful doji that day. And after the doji, what happened? It was directional day. It was a BNB, right? So it's a BNB. That means that there will be upside potential. And you can see that now, Vola, right? Can you see this? Beautiful, right? The market did a BNB right here. And then now it broke above the resistance level. So likely it's going to go up to test this point here. And that is 15,512. Okay. Now there is an MA30 here that I believe will be a bit of resistance here. And that's 15,398. So once the NASDAQ can cross this 15,398, I am pretty confident that it will go to the 15,512 level. All right, so that is my confidence in this market right here now. If the market can uh, can concentrate and break above the MA30, we could see it going to this point here, and that's 15,512 level. Okay, traders, kindly uh, take note of that, okay? Okay, so that is the NASDAQ on the conventional. Let's look at the NASDAQ on the TWB chart. Now the TWB chart shows that the NASDAQ today is going to be pretty positive. You can see that how we know that because the KSI happened to be green and the opening price is between the two pivot. So as long as the market stays above the opening mark, it should be able to go to the pivot one and it's 15,392 and it's seemingly on, the, on track to go there itself. Okay, seemingly on track going there. Okay, all right, so likely the market will be going to this point here so okay. Now I just saw Hang Seng had just moved higher. Wow, Hang Seng has just even go higher. Let's take a look. Oh gosh, Hang Seng has went now even higher to 34,320 level. Okay, again, and I said again and again, you, when the colors are yellow, you just cannot fight with it. And this morning, you can see that once the market crosses over pivot one, it's a very strong buy. -up. So once it crosses 24,445, it crosses the pivot one, it's a buy. Unless the market goes below 24,245, you know the upside is still going to be there. Now, I'm not too sure what's happening in the China market or the Hong Kong market, but they are definitely buying in the China market now. Wow, look at it. China has broke past the MA30. And I told you that it's all because of the buying from the Chinese government. And so now you have broke above the MA30. So that's why Hong Kong also uptick. So all these are all related and that's why you need to know all of them, okay? S&P 500 has climbed above the MA30 level. There is a very strong resistance at 44.64 and now it has crossed above it. Now 44.64 is the MA30 level and now the market has crossed above it closing rather strongly above it. So as long as the market stays above 44.64, there is a good chance that the S&P may go back up again to 4,500 level, 4,500 level. So traders do take note of that. Now the thing is this, as you can see right now, the market came down to the 95% mark level, which I told you is gonna be very bullish. Once it hit the 95% mark, you notice that it couldn't go down and immediately rejected. It happened before, it happened again, it's going to happen again. So as long as the market hit the 95% mark and doesn't recover and doesn't go down, right, it's a buy. I've been saying this for longest of time, and it's all happening right now. Okay, happening right now. So the MLP for today, let's take a look. MLP for today will be somewhere around here. So the market is very bullish. It's above MLP and above MA30. It's a very bullish positioning. 
The MA200 is at the bottom level, so it's pretty far away. So overall, the market is still pretty positive. Okay, pretty positive. All right, so you can see that the US market, whether it's Dow Jones, NASDAQ, S&P 500, all of them are pretty positive. That's why traders should be staying on the long side for time being right now, okay? All right. S&P 500 still within a two pivot point. KSI is green in color. So it's very positive for time being, very positive. Yeah, okay. All right, let's look at the DAX market. Now, DAX, I mentioned to you for DAX. I said that DAX should be uh, should be restricted around this area here at 15,652 level. And really look at it. Oh my goodness. Look at this, what I, the line that I draw, right? 15,652. Those who remember that I told you that it's a very important level at 15,652 for the DAX. Please key the word spot on for me, DAX spot on. Remember that? Remember, DAX spot on. I told you that DAX will have a resistance at 15,652. Let's do a quick recap on what happened on that day last Friday. You can see that the DAX opened and almost hit the, the level that I mentioned. And before you can know it, the DAX collapsed down all the way, bang, came down all the way. So again, the technicality of the, and the accuracy is impeccable. We have shown you a couple of charts already and you can see that the technical is brilliant. And I'm gonna tell you the good news is for TWB student, very, very soon, you're gonna be able to have these lines automatically drawn for you. Yes, students of mine, stand by, very exciting too. I just got the uh, developer version yesterday, very late last night, about 1 a.m. So later on after my MAO, I'm gonna play this little toy. And if this little toy really, really good, um, do I mean it's good, then that, that means I'm gonna share more with you. Okay, all right. So watch out for that. Okay, all right. We can uh, still see that's a lot of movement right now in the Hong Kong market, the U.S. market. Everything is now looking to buy. It, it, it seems that now if you don't buy, you are like you're in the wrong position in the market. <laughs> okay, everything looks very positive right now. Okay, thank you, Dad. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Janet, Susan, Michael, Eric. All right, for remember that I say about the DEX level. Okay, let's look at the Nikkei right now. Now, Nikkei. Now, Nikkei, I mentioned that as long as the Nikkei stays above the moving average MA30, it will be positive and it is doing it right now. Now, we saw what happened on the Nikkei. You can see that um, this is the Nikkei that they, the MLP, it basically hit the MLP, stop there, recover, beautiful. Now, today, the MLP will be drawn somewhere like this. Okay, so now what we have is a very positive movement. It's above the uh, opening price, it's above MLP, it's above moving average, three reasons, hence therefore the Nikkei continue to go higher. All right, this is the Nikkei movement, so it's pretty good. All right, let's look at the Nikkei on the M, on the convent, our, this uh, TWB chart. Now you can see that the opening price this morning was below pivot two, but it stays above it. And TSI is green in color, so it means that the upside is strong. And as long as the market stays above OP and above the pivot two, it's a buy. And you can see that the Nikkei is now moving higher. So this morning when the market opens and it's above the opening price, which is here, and it's above P2, it's a buy. And that's why Nikkei going up is kind of expected. So all these tells you that it's so important to really know your technique well, your system well. If you, you don't want to buy a system that you don't know what's going on, you need to buy a system that really help you to know exactly what's going to happen. And for you, reactive, how do you react against on the buy and sell side? So all these are telltale sign in the market. Yeah. Okay, all right. So this is what's happening right now. Okay, so this is the Nikkei. All right, done deal. Okay. So we have covered all the uh, equity markets. Let's look at the commodities market right now, commodities. Now, gold is going higher. Now, 1758 right now. This morning, I already tell you, gold should be going higher based on what I saw on Friday's movement. And indeed, now gold is trading higher. Uh, first of all, for gold, 
this is the moving MLP. You can see that it's above the MLP right now. But in terms of moving average, it's still basically trading below the MA30 and below the MA200. So uh, what is happening right here right now is that gold likely will go up further, but it will meet resistance pretty soon. What level would that be? That'd be 1762. So 1762 would be the gold first uh, barrier. It is the Fibonacci figure. So only if gold cross 1762, then it will be going towards the next level, which is the MA30 and was 1781. Now you can see that for us, we are very precise. We give numbers at the ES, we don't tell you a variable big number like here to there. And then you guess. We give you a very precise number and for you to go and utilize it and make money for the market. So as long as the goal stays above OP today, 1762 will be the first target. Crossing 1762 without any pulling back will be leading to 1781 level, right? So today kind of bullish on the goal right now, okay? And of course, I did mention to some of you that uh, why am I bullish? Because uh, although people are looking at bearish, but I see the buying momentum is kind of there. And the last Fridays, the last Thursday, the way it hit the goal and then rebounded, reminded me that the upside is still pretty intact. So that's why I told you guys on Thursday when the goal hit this point here, I told you that I don't see downside, but I see upside instead and really it's happening right now. So for those who remember that I say that the goal will rebound, do you remember that? If you remember that I say the goal will rebound, please key REM. Remember that I mentioned goal will rebound, is REM. So if you, rem if you remember that I told you goal will rebound th this week, then please key REM, all right? Okay, or again, go spot on also can. All right, thank you very much, Anthony and Eric. Okay, so this is again very clear. If you want to verify my story, uh, you can watch a replay on YouTube. You can see that I really mentioned that the goal will be found soon. And true be told, really, really happened. And of course, did we profit from that? Definitely. For those who have followed through, uh, they will have made money on goal today. Yeah, correct. Mm, indeed. So we'll go, go higher. As I told you, my view is that goal will go higher. Uh, my target is 1762 today, at least for the first initial upside, okay? 1762. Okay, King Hua, David, Jerry, Fred, thank you. All right, to also who remember. Okay, so that is goal. Then goal weekly chart, as I showed you before, goal weekly chart, we saw a very interesting doji formation. And now seemingly it's trying to uptick again. So this week, now last week, the 1770 is a very important level, which it didn't go through. So this week is all right. What's the golden number for this week? The golden number for this week is one, sorry. 1768. I repeat, the golden number for this week is 1768, $10 away. So which means that if the goal is to go up, it will have to cross 1768 for it to go further high, to go higher. If the goal hit 1768 and couldn't stay, then it could be uh, another round of selling for that. So go traders, okay, go, I'll write it down for you, go weekly TA, uh, technical, technical point, it is 1768. Okay, so as long as the goal cross 1768, goal will go higher. But if goal hit 1768 and couldn't go higher, then that could be forming a bit of resistance on that. Yeah, okay. Let's look at goal uh, today's movement. Now, goal today's movement is pretty clear, very beautiful. Why? First of all, the opening price is below, it's within a two pivot one and pivot two, right? and the KSI is red and blue bars are there. The only thing is that the positive note is that there's KCX blinking right now. That means it's, it's bottoming out soon. So two days ago, the KCX appeared. So that's why we know that today go slightly will be going higher because it already bottomed up two days ago around this area. So again, that is why our uh, trading can be very simple and outright because we know exactly what to do when things happen. We don't need to wait, see fundamental. We don't need to do this. We know exactly what to do. 
And because it goes above the pivot one, above OP, above pivot one is a buy, by net, by, by upfront is a buy, right? So this morning itself, you can see the market has already been staying green. So you can see the price was coming down on a 15 minute chart with traditional indicators of form of sell, but our indicator is green. So that means that the indicator tells us that the buying is still there. So when the color change over, you can see there's a few things here. First of all, this is the color change, CCRY, red to yellow is a buy. Then you'll notice that it's a B and B at the same time. Wow, very nice. And of course, it's a color change at the trigger. Okay. And no blue bars. Look at it. No blue bars, no uh, KSI green. It's a very, very bullish positioning. And of course, you can see that gold shoot up all the way from the 1749 level, when at the 1759 level, $10 of movement in less than two hours. And all you need to do is just follow the chart, follow the colors and execute. That is what you're supposed to do and traders have made money from that. All right, so that's why I keep on saying this guys, follow the chart, follow the TWB system is the most easiest thing to do. Okay, all right, so that's what happened to gold price. Okay, so watch out for that. Okay, um, then after that we have silver. Now silver is also recovering. Now last Friday we saw a bit of doji movement and I did say that as long as silver stays above a technical point, it should be good. So this technical point should be here. I think I'm going to stick here. As long as the market stays above this point here at 22, 40, 22, 24, silver should be able to go higher. I suspect that silver this time around should be able to test the MA30 level and that's on 22 level, 20, 23 level. All right, let me just bring it down. There you go. Yeah, about 23, 20 level will be the level that I think silver will be going up. So where we are now is 22, 60, right? I believe that we will each see going up to 23, 30 level. So that's another cool 70 cents upside. Okay, so traders, take note of that. Huh? Now, 70 cents is a lot of money. As long as you know how to utilize it, it's going to be very, very useful. Okay. All right, so let's just look at the crude oil market. Now, crude oil, I already tell you, crude oil will go higher, remember? Wow, look at crude oil, my friends. Crude oil has blasted up. It's now at $75 already. Oh my goodness, we have taken profit recently, but now the crude oil went even higher. Oh my gosh. So where would be crude oil going? It can go up as much as here, and that's $75.76. And I told you guys, as long as crude oil is going higher, the, the Dow will follow through and it's happening right now as we speak. Can you see that? So now the thing is this $75 will be the next target. $25.36 will be the next target for this uh, uh, crude oil. But of course, I'm not going to encourage you to chase it right now. Maybe a pullback first, then we'll get it. But definitely, I told you it will go up and indeed it really, really follow. So today is above MLP, above OP above MA30, so everything is looking good for this counter right now. So traders, after this, do remember that, okay? Don't chase right now, let the pullback come in, you're gonna buy, wait for a while later, okay? Very, very important. Huh? For those who made money in crude oil, congratulations to you. You have trusted on me and you made money. That's very important. Again, so for today, it's very clear uh, for crude oil. It's a very, it's a, the day chart is beautiful, yellow bar, KSI is red, bullishness is definitely there. And now it's crossing above pivot one, 7504 is a pivot one level. If the market is to go up right, it has to stay above the 7504 level. Okay, all right, there's a KCB here at 7574, I told you earlier. Once the crude oil goes up, I believe that he will it will be basically hitting this point and trader can uh, take some profit at 74, 75 level. This is the level that I think you should take some profit, okay? Don't be too greedy. Try to take some profit around here at 75, 74 level. Okay, very important, huh? Okay, all right, so I covered all the, commodity, the equity market, commodity market, let's look at the cryptocurrency to wrap it up for today. Now this is the cryptocurrency market. Let's take a look. Now we saw, we don't have the weekend data, so we didn't see the market selling down, but you can see over here right now, there's a couple of things to take note of. First of all, I say that there are a few levels to watch out for to buy Bitcoin. One is 40,800, 39,700, 
and 38,000 flat. All right, so for me, I will still be watching out for crypto, oil, for crypto to come down to this point here, purchase it for it to go up. Okay, I believe that this is going to be a very, very powerful thing. Okay, now the opening price for today, let's take a look. The opening price for today is between the two pivot, right? No, sorry, some color type of right here. Wanna? This guy shouldn't be there. That's why it confused people. Okay, this is the second way. Oh, okay, this is the 61.8. Okay, so that means that the market pulls back, hit 61.8, and then recover. Okay, fair enough. So, what I'm trying to say is that if, if crude oil can go down, it'd be better to buy somewhere around here. Okay, the, the lower, the better. All right, clear? Yeah. Because the boys are still buying and the blue bars are retreating. So all these are telling you the telltale sign that the market could be recovering a bit more than usual. Okay, so that is the Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin comes to 40,000, 39,000 or 48,000, that will be the three level that I look at Bitcoin to buy. Now, how about Ethereum? Now, Ethereum. Now, Ethereum is also is pretty positive. It has went down below the 2800 mark and then now it's back to 3150. I did tell you guys that Bitcoin, right? If you come down for Ethereum, come down to 2850, you can consider to give a call, all right? And then contact on us here itself at 2850. So now it's at 3150, it went away. So you have to wait for a while. Now the thing is this, if you ever come down, I'm definitely looking at two places. One is 2700 and 2400. Level these two levels are the levels that are watching out for Ethereum for a very better, better it's going to be a, like you know, you know buy for a bit longer term right these are the two levels that I prefer so last time we saw this you can see that the market hit the twenty seven zero six level and then almost instantly it rebounded to thirty one so it was up already more than ten percent in a, just a very quick move here so it's like I'm still waiting here and see whether can we get get it again okay. All right, so that is the Bitcoin and Ethereum. And because of that, I have covered everything already. I hope that you enjoyed today's MAO. But I say once again, I try to keep my analysis short within an hour or so. Main thing is to drive it down that you can make money from the market as long as you follow the TWB system. And also, you know what to do with the market. All right, that will be all for today, today's MAO. I hope that you enjoyed this session. Then again, if you want to join us live in person, but you're not a TWB student, then consider to join us because this, all this little analysis will definitely help you to make back your cost fee. All right, that'll be all for today. Thank you very much. Have a great day. This is Kel signing off. Bye-bye.